Hey, what's up? It's Alfonso on Ask the Fonz. Today's topic is dailies. In my last video, uh, I talked about being an assistant editor and the different responsibilities during, you know, the whole editing process. And today I want to dive deeper into the dailies process. Before I begin, though, I just want to define the term dailies because, you know, just in case you're curious or you don't know what the term means, dailies are the raw, unedited shots that you receive from set. They're rushed to the editing room as fast as possible and just so that the editor can get, you know, his, his or her work started as soon as possible, you know, once the first day of shooting starts. And that's, you know, hence the term dailies, you know, they rushed every day and also hence the, the, the film term rushes. Um, so yeah, so that's where the term comes from and it's kind of stuck from, you know, the film days and all the way through now. And just before I begin, I do want to mention that my work as an assistant editor doesn't start on the first day of shoot. It actually starts way in advance before the first day of shooting because I have to prepare so much before that first day comes and, you know, that whole process becomes really chaotic. So I have to make sure I'm ready and make sure everything is sort of set up in order for a successful shoot. So I always make it a point to prepare before the first day of the shoot. You know, normally when I hop on a gig, I usually like to request the script, usually two or three weeks before I start. Hopefully they can give it to you. And then that's when I really start my work. And I first read it just for the story, you know, to understand the characters, the mood of the story, the motives, uh, the arcs, and kind of just read it as just an audience, uh, you know, and, and enjoying it uh, for what it is. And then the second time, I actually read it as an assistant editor. Now that means I'm breaking down each scene and sort of listing, you know, what each scene needs. And that means, you know, if there's specific sound effects that I need to make sure I have before I hand uh, the scene over to my editor, or, you know, if there's a huge VFX scene that is needed or some sort of big action scene or a big scene that calls for visual effects. And I kind of want to make sure that I have all these assets uh, you know, put together, uh, you know, in an organized document so that, you know, I can just track, you know, let's just say scene five, uh, it'll need specific sound effects or, you know, scene seven, it'll need like this visual effects shot that I'm going to tempt up. If you think about it, like, uh, you know, let's, let's take uh, the baby driver opening scene, for instance, you know, um, you read that on the script and it's sort of, you know, it, it's kind of exciting when you read it on the script, you know, uh, a car pulls up by the bank, you know, bank robbers get out of the car while the driver stays in and listens to music. And there's a lot of different, you know, elements in that scene. And I think it's a good, it's a great example, you know, to, to kind of break this down because um, as an assistant editor, I would be highlighting all of those things. I'd be highlighting uh, music, car door opening or car gear shifting or bank alarm or um, robbers pulling out guns or shooting, you know, gun shooting and, um, all these different elements to make the scene more realistic. So um, it's really important to kind of get ahead of that. You know, if I was to do the scene, you know, I, again, I'd, I'd get, you know, bullet sound effects, alarm bells, um, police sirens, um, tire squeaking, um, car revving, gear shifting, uh, you know, helicopter noise, um, just uh, radio dispatch calls, just a lot of different sounds that are very particular to the scene so that you know, when my editor gets to editing it, he or she will have all the, this actual library that actually pertains to a scene and doesn't have to go and search for you know, specific sound effects. Or if you, um, you know, or if the editor wants you to mock up the sound mix, then it becomes fun for you. You know, you'll have all these sounds and then you can sort of start, you know, putting it all together for your editor. And you can, that's when the, uh, you know, you get to be creative for a second and you kind of put together a, a really fun and rhythmic action scene, uh, just like in Baby Driver. So, um, yeah, so I think that that's, that's sort of the execution part of uh, this organizational process. I like to kind of make sure I can get a, get ahead of it and kind of think in my head like this is what I'm, I'm expecting to do or this is what I'm bracing for. So yeah, so that's a huge part of my um, preparation process is to kind of build all these assets and then even, you know, visual effects, you know, I sort of overthink a little bit, let's just say for like a political rally, if it's a political show, you know, let's just say that there's going to be a state of the union speech for, you know, the president. I normally just start and maybe they might need a crowd extension instead of um, filling a whole chamber full of extras. You know, I kind of like to think about that just in case, you know, I need to temp up crowd extensions or if I'm 
you know, if I'm not so knowledgeable on how to do crowd extensions, then I'm going to make sure way before in advance that I look up tutorials on how to do it so that on the day of, you know, getting the footage, I can start working on getting, you know, a good crowd extension shot. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, this is all just temp. Um, it'll eventually go to a visual effects vendor for them to actually do the work. But the closer you can get to making it look as real as possible, you know, everyone will appreciate it. You know, the director will definitely appreciate it. Your editor will love you for it. And then even you can have that in your arsenal of skills that you can sort of provide for the editing room. So um, it's good to know all of that stuff. Um, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, it's great to see an editor's cut with, you know, really well done visual effects and it helps kind of give confidence to the director that this is the direction we're going for. So uh, good visual effects, uh, again, prep for, you know, a library of sound effects. And then, you know, if the, the show calls for stock, uh, you know, you're going to need stock footage. Let's just say, again, with this political show, maybe, you know, it was based on real events. So you're going to need stock footage for whatever event that the story is about. So again, just putting, making a list of all these things will really help you. Hopefully you won't start your gig literally on the first day of the shooting day. So maybe it'll give you a couple of days to set up. And I think the setup days are very important. Um, I like to personally ask for three or four days before the shooting begins so that I can test run my editing system. I can test run my editor system and I can also do a lot of preparation things to, to make sure that, you know, the dailies process goes smoothly. So I normally like to make sure that the sound levels in my room and my editor's room sound very consistent so that when I'm doing a sound mix, you know, it's not all over the place and it sounds pretty consistent in both of our rooms. And then also I do a test export, you know, when we're working during the dailies phase and my editor wants to show something to the director, I don't want the director to email me and say, Hey, like the uh, export doesn't work or there's something wrong with it. So I just want to make sure I'm testing the export process as well. And then um, obviously just logistics, you know, parking or um, seeing if the building's open 24 seven, getting into your room. I'm sure there's a lot of security things that, you know, you don't want to be dealing with during the dailies phase. So I think that's very important. So, yeah, so I think that's sort of, you know, basic overview of the, the preparation of what I do before the first day of dailies starts. So, um, yeah, so let's talk about when the actual first day of shooting starts. So here we go. You prepped for a couple of weeks, you broke down the script, you set up your facility, your editing room, and made sure everything is really ready for the first day of shooting. Um, and here we go, the first day of shooting arrives. The biggest thing here I can tell you is that you're gonna feel overwhelmed. Um, it's very stressful during the first you know, couple of days of shooting. Um, in every day, you know, I, I, even if you've done this several times already, it's still going to be very stressful, you know, because workflow problems might arise that you, you know, you just obviously can't plan for. It's just things happen. Um, and then you, you know, if you started working with a new editor, you, you're, you're still trying to get into a rhythm or you're still trying to learn how he or she likes to have things delivered. Trying to get into a rhythm and trying to get into uh, the flow of things will always take time so don't put so much pressure on yourself for the first couple of days of shooting and make sure to you know again it's gonna just understand that it's gonna be stressful and it's gonna be overwhelming and a lot of things are just gonna sort of come at you all at once but you know once you get into a rhythm and once you get into a flow of things i promise it'll get better i do want to mention that there are five people during this phase i mean during the whole editing process will really play a huge role for you and um, play a really important part to help you and making sure that things come in smoothly and that everything that is shot from set comes in properly uh, into your system. So the first person that you want to make sure that you're obviously in good standing with is your editor. Um, your editor is your creative boss. Um, and then the second person is your post-production supervisor, or your post-production producer, um, your logistics boss. And the three people that are on set that will really help you is um, your script supervisor, your production sound mixer, and the second assistant camera. They are your eyes and ears on set. Befriend them if you have a chance to visit set, go and talk to them first, uh, introduce yourself to them, start a really good relationship with all three of them because they're gonna be the ones who actually save you. Uh, you know, when things go awry, when things mismatch in your editing software, they're gonna be the ones that you'll be reaching out to. So. Um, it always helps to start a great relationship with them even before the first day of shooting begins so that, you know, it, it builds a little bit more rapport, builds trust. So 
um, they're going to be the ones to, to help you and sort of sort things out for you, especially because you're not on set. So now I'm going to talk to you about all those five people individually and separately so that I can share with you what an important role that they have during this dailies process. So the first person I want to talk to you about is the script supervisor. It's really important to build a good relationship and a good cadence with your script supervisor because every shoot day, they're going to be the ones who you communicate with to see what went down or what went wrong. They're going to be your main point of contact and communication from production to the editing room because they're the ones taking notes for every shot, uh, letting you know if the director likes a specific take or if there's some sort of problem in the field, you know, we couldn't get enough uh, light in the shot, or if one of like the mics on the actor wasn't working and they still kept rolling. So, you know, all these small issues or things that come up on set, the script supervisor will know what went down. There was an instance in one of my shows where, you know, there was only four takes in my editing system and there was really five and the, the script supervisor wrote five takes. And, you know, I emailed and said, hey, like, um, I only have four takes in my system and you wrote five here. Can you confirm that there are only actually four takes that they were rolling on? And, you know, she emailed me back and said, hey, sorry, the first take was actually a false roll, meaning that they didn't actually roll. It was just a, a test roll. Um, so then that prompted her to actually write, you know, five takes when they're only actually four. So the script supervisor will know what happened because, you know, they were there and they obviously will have better insight on what exactly happened. And, you know, normally they don't have time to write every single thing down. And that's why, again, you have to make sure that, you know, everything that's coming from set is translated and matches up in your editing system. So always ask questions, you know, even if it's pretty obvious, make sure you can get the confirmation. And then that email, I CC'd, you know, my post producer, my editor, and all the other assistants that were affected by this so that they know for sure, and it's not just coming from me, it's coming from the script supervisor that that actually happened. You know, that was a false role in the first take. So there are only four takes. Make sure that this doesn't go unnoticed. You know, let's just say hypothetically, I let this slip by. What if they actually did shoot five takes, you know? and and during the director's cut and, you know, director and editor are talking and, you know, what if the director goes, oh, I actually like take five better. Let's use take five. And my editor looks at her, his or her bin and says, see, there's only, we only have four of this. And the director knows the footage very well. You know, he was there on set. He's like, no, there's five. And then we actually do, in fact, look at the actual script notes and there actually is five takes. Yeah, you're screwed. Like, that is a pretty bad situation. So again, like it's better to be safe than sorry. You know, you don't want to be in that situation where the director asks for something and you don't have it when you really should have known that you didn't have it during that day. So again, this script supervisor is your best friend on set, your eyes and ears. Make sure you have a really good relationship with him or her. And then the next person is your production sound mixer. They are the ones in charge of all audio related problems or issues or notes that come up on set. If anything that uh, sound related, let's just say uh, the audio was low and during the scene, or if there are certain mics that weren't activated on, on a specific character, if things aren't in sync, this is a big thing. Uh, a lot of things sound related, the production sound mixer will be your point of contact. You know, specifically, they'll be the ones to give you wild track lines. Usually wild track lines are lines that are different options for the character to say and who are not necessarily on the screen. So you can sort of cheat it um, and, and put it in uh, to the scene uh, without, you know, anyone knowing that it was a wild track line. Just like the script supervisor, they'll have notes for you as well so that you can match up and line up against the footage that you've ingested into the system. So, and then if anything is mismatching, you can contact, you know, even your script supervisor might have some information according, you know, regarding the sound. So um, your sound mixer obviously will be more knowledgeable in what happened, but again, don't hesitate to, to contact both um, and make sure everyone's on the same page. And the third person is the second assistant camera or the second AC. They'll be the ones to help you with anything camera related, you know, uh, aspect ratio, speed changes, or if there was like a false roll or if the camera died during mid take, you know, there's so many different problems that happen on set that you just won't know until, you know, you read the notes and they have uh, a list of things that went wrong. So if you're also in a project and you're being tasked as an assistant editor um, to be in charge of the uh, ingesting process or being the person who takes the camera card and 
putting it into the system and making sure everything is logged and transferred and archived. The second assistant camera will be your point of contact. So you both need to come up with a system so that you know you don't accidentally erase cards that have raw media on it you know until everything is backed up or until everything is archived so um actually for me in fact i was a part of a couple productions that i was in charge of doing that i was essentially the dit which is the digital imaging technician which you know there's some productions that have it and some productions that uh, actually require the assistant editor to just do that process for them. It's very important. Again, it's very important to have a safe and secure process to make sure that no media can get deleted or trashed by accident. You know, um, I have a system, you know, I always make sure that I initial uh, cards and let's say cleared on it for me. And I think personally, I, I'm going to clear the cards. Like I want to trash everything. I know I don't want to accidentally send a card that has all sorts of media that I haven't really cleared yet. And then they start deleting everything and then whose fault is it, you know? So again, for me, my process is I make sure that uh, I have everything backed up. I cross check and make sure, triple check that like everything's on an LTO, it's backed up because you're basically in charge of the raw media. You two are in charge of the raw media and making sure that all the cards get recycled and when it's okay to delete a card and to, to keep it, you know, archived and not touched. And then the fourth person is your post producer, your post supervisor. Uh, they're basically your logistics boss. For instance, if there needs to be an ADR or uh, automated dialogue recording, meaning if the character on the show needs to redo his or her line, you're gonna need ADR. And who's gonna set up the ADR between the sound facility and the editing room and the character or the actor? the post supervisor or the post producer the sound people are going to want a quick time or a, a reference of the scene that's going to be re-recorded so post supervisor will come to me and say hey we need this specific scene uh, exported and sent and delivered the way that the sound department wants the scene in so i'll have to prep that and turn that over um, and then the, the post supervisor will also have to reach out to the actor and see you know, when or when is he or she available to do the ADR? You know, that's just one situation that, you know, post supervisor are in charge of. And they're also in charge of like um, budgeting and the costs of all these things. You obviously have to pay everyone. You have to pay your visual effects vendors, your sound department, um, you know, all the outside vendors that we're going to be using other than obviously the internal editing room. So um, they're going to have to figure out you know, how many visual effects shots are going to be in the cut because then that means money, you know, it means you have to either cut down on some visual effects shots because we can't afford it or if we have enough in the budget or if we have extra in the budget, then we can afford to get some more visual effects shots done, you know, or finding other vendors to accommodate those shots because they aren't charging as much. And it's a lot of uh, moving parts here. And then the post supervisor is basically in charge of, um, you know, quarterbacking this whole thing. Anything that is logistical wise, your post supervisor will be there to help you with that. So uh, make sure you are in good standing with your post supervisor. And then lastly, your editor. Your editor is obviously your number one priority throughout this whole ride. So make sure that your editor is always being taken care of and always has something to do. I think that's the most important thing as an assistant editor is don't ever have your editor be waiting on you or if there's something that he or she could work on, then definitely bring it up as an idea. So you, you know, you always want to be efficient in your editor's time because you know, they want to make sure that they can get this whole show or this whole movie done before the director comes in to do his or her director's cut. So, you know, time is very precious, especially during this phase. If you are sort of swamped in trying to prep a really big scene for your editor, then maybe you should try to give him or her a small scene that you can do really quickly so that he or she can cut that scene, buy more time to give yourself more time to prep for the big scene. You know, again, there's some editors that prefer to do big scenes first in the morning. So maybe you come in extra early then to have to, you know, make sure you prep that big scene so that when the editor comes in, you know, you can have enough time to prepare that scene uh, in the way that he or she wants it. And then, you know, if you give that first big scene, then you'll obviously buy yourself more time for the other scenes to prep. So again, there's a lot of different ways that you can make sure your editor is prioritized and working. Uh, really think about that and have a conversation with your editor um, way in advance uh, so that, you know, once the first day of shooting comes, 
you're not sort of scrambling you're not trying to you know trying to get on the same page it's always a great idea to kind of talk about the process that he or she wants and um, always try to accommodate that if your editor wants you know wall cards you know for continuity like meaning if they want uh you know scenes broken down uh, on a cork board and everything is sort of just laid out perfectly you know by scenes like obviously like, accommodate that make sure you have you know put that in your schedule and put time to to do that you know you want to make sure your editor feels uh, taken care of um, and is really focused on the job as an editor and not sort of being distracted by sort of outside things. Yeah, again, during this whole phase, uh, your editor is your highest priority. And if anything happens during this phase and your editor needs you, you stop everything what you're doing and you go and help your editor. Make sure everything gets fixed, everything gets sort of taken care of. And if you can't do it at that moment, just say, I will look into it and I will um, make sure it gets done by the end of the day. Or, you know, hopefully it doesn't necessarily take the whole week, but if you need time to just fix the problem, try to do it as fast as possible so that everything can be accommodated and make sure that your editor feels taken care of. So hopefully now you're in a rhythm and you're kind of getting into a groove of the dailies, maybe just, you know, day 15, day 16, I don't know, hopefully even uh, earlier than that, you feel like you've got it all under control and you're going into work every day feeling pretty good about the rhythm and the cadence. So maybe at the end of the day, you have one or two hours to, to spare. And these moments are actually really fun for me because what I like to do is I like to actually practice my editing during this phase. Uh, if Again, if you only have the free time to do this, I would highly recommend doing it because it's a good time to sort of compare your scenes to your editors and you know this is a good part to learn and this is the part that i think you should reward yourself with you know some editors don't really care if you uh actually edit on the side but again just bring it up and just say hey i just want to practice editing scenes is it cool if i do that on my free time i'll make sure that you know all my work is done i, I like to do that i like to reward myself with editing time you know um, it's sort of a good incentive for me to work really hard in the morning and then afternoon and then you know, if I have a couple hours or maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes to spare and I will normally, you know, open up a bin and start cutting a scene. Um, it's just, it feels good, you know, because you've worked so hard that you, you know, you're, you're eventually wanting to become an editor. So this is the time when you should start learning how to do it and how to practice creatively how to edit. So I was on a couple of gigs that, you know, I had zero time to edit during the dailies phase because it was just too busy. And then there are some projects that I did, you know, I did have that time that I could have easily gone home and, you know, whatever, not th thought about editing or not thought about work. But, you know, I chose to stay because I really wanted to improve my editing. I really wanted to learn from uh, my editor. And you're watching all the dailies anyway. You might as well learn and practice how to become an editor because one day you're going to be on that seat and you're going to have to cut four or five scenes a day. So you have to kind of build that that muscle and learn how to edit fast and efficiently and also pretty well you know feel confident about it well i hope that gives you a little bit more insight on the dailies phase um, in the next video i will definitely talk to you guys more about the editor's cut and then the director's cut and what goes into that process i really do appreciate you guys watching this if you want more advice on this topic i do one-on-one -on -one phone sessions at www.askthefawns.com and you go to the schedule mentorship tab and you can sign up there for a one-on-one -on -one phone session and i'll give you more advice on on the dailies process, uh, director's cut, or anything, becoming an assistant editor. I'm trying to help you fulfill your goal and, and trying to break into this industry as best as I can. So go ahead, sign up for a mentorship call there at www.askthefawns.com. And I'm also on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, everything that is out there right now. I'm on all those platforms. So go ahead, give me a follow. And if you want to get more of this free content, subscribe to my channel, give me a like, shout out, ask me anything down below. I'm happy to answer every question that you guys have. So feel free to share this with all of your friends and all of your budding aspiring film editors out there. So thanks for watching. Hope you found something useful here. Until next time.